Cisco's recent zero-day exploit takes an obfuscation turn, VMware alerts users of a significant auth bypass flaw, and Citrix grapples with session hijacking attacks that have CISA raising an eyebrow. For ThreatWire, I'm Darren Kitchen, and this is your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. So the situation with the recent Cisco iOS XE exploit has developed a little further. The threat actors have refined their backdoor techniques, making them a little more stealthy. As you'll recall from last week, a set of zero-day vulnerabilities were found to be exploited in the wild. Certain iOS XE routers and switches from Cisco have had their web interfaces exposed, and because of that, well, against best practices, they've been compromised with a malicious implant. Researchers from Fox IT reveal that the implant now incorporates additional header checks, which means that the devices are still compromised, they still function normal, but the implant is now a little stealthier as it only responds when it detects a correct authorization header. With the two CVEs linked below chained together, an attacker can compromise the affected devices with an authentication bypass allowing them to create admin level accounts and the, the effects of which is what we've been seeing in the wild, which is a Lua based backdoor. Cisco has gone ahead and acknowledged the behavior change from the threat actors. And since the 22nd, they've started to release patches. They've also updated their advisories to spell out workarounds as well as an updated method to detect compromised devices. So network admins, if you run the provided curl command on a box that'll be able to hit your Cisco devices in question, it'll actually return a hex string that'll give you positive confirmation if it is indeed infected. Now, the initial report on the scale of the infection was estimated at some 40,000 devices compromised. However, over the weekend, security researchers found the number from their scanners had just plummeted to some 1,200. That led to speculation and eventual confirmation that indeed the threat actors changed the implant to only respond to a known username and password. Cisco verified this in a statement, quote, the addition of the header check in the implant by the attackers is likely a reactive measure to prevent identification of compromised systems. Now, as our fellow CCNAs pointed out in the comments last week, it's time to disable that vulnerable web interface, reflash the equipment, reconfigure with backups from version control, and my best goes out to all of you. Now, continuing on with authentication bypasses this week, VMware flagged a proof of concept exploit for a newly patched vulnerability that impacts their area operations for logs product. This vulnerability with the CVE linked below carries a significant CVSS score of 8.1. It's an authentication bypass that, if exploited, can lead to remote code execution. VMware emphasized the severity by stating, quote, an unauthenticated malicious actor can inject files into the operating system of an impacted appliance, which can result in remote code execution. The flaw was spotted by James Horseman from Horizon3.ai in conjunction with the Randori attack team. After discovering the vulnerability, the team actually went ahead and released a proof of concept code in Python, which prompted VMware to update its advisory. What adds another layer to this story is that the CVE isn't entirely new. It's actually an, you know, essentially a bypass from earlier patches that VMware rolled out this January. Uh, and uh, that was to address other critical vulnerabilities. Horseman pointed out the significance of thorough patching stating, quote, this attack highlights the importance of defense in depth. A defender can't always trust that an official patch fully mitigates a vulnerability. Now, in a parallel virtualization story, no pun intended, hypervisor vendor Citrix has also had its hands full. They've issued advisories for a critical vulnerability affecting their Netscaler ADC and gateway products, which are actively being exploited in the wild. The CVEs linked below have a high CVSS score of 9.4. The gravity of those vulnerability is clear from the reported incidents. We're talking targeted attacks, which hint to session hijacking, and that's been confirmed by Google-owned Mandiant, which stated Tuesday that it has identified zero-day exploits in the wild going back to late August of this year. Now, with the proof of concept exploit named Citrix Bleed out in the public, it's anticipated that exploit attempts will intensify. So as a response to the increased risk, the US Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, or CISA, has flagged the CVE in its known exploited vulnerabilities catalog. That basically means that US federal agencies have to implement the most recent patches no later than November 8th. 
And with that, I'd like to remind you that Threatwire is in transition with new and familiar faces on the horizon. Shannon's been on vacation, so if you've been missing your perks like the audio RSS feed, be sure to check your email and note that you'll need to migrate back to patreon.com slash threatwire to keep supporting the show and keep getting those perks. Thank you so much. We couldn't do this without you. Uh, until next time, I'd love to hear what you think in the comments. I'm Darren Kitchen, and I'll see you on the internet.